So we got another new toy and we're going to open it up. This is called the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Grill. There is another one of these. It's a little bit sm it's smaller. It's just called the Ninja Foodie Grill. This is the big this one. This is the big one. We were thinking family wise that this would be a good tool. This one also does what some of the other products do. It will um, air fry, cook. Um, it also said it would dehydrate, which is what the other uh, one we have does. But this one grills. And in the, it's supposed to be smokeless, so it's an indoor um, grill. Less. It's nothing is completely uh, This small. is extremely large. Um, it, uh, just reading these here where it says it is 1,760 watt foodie grill. It has a nine by 12, uh, grate. air fryer has the capacity for four quarts. Family size cook pot has six quarts. It comes with its own thermometer and it's easy to clean. I hope that's in focus. It doesn't look like it is, but. You have a little bit I'll of I'll take a, a picture stuff. of the label later. Okay. This one, and it comes with a recipe book. I think most of them do now. Open this. Now, open the box. Ooh, pretty pictures. Too bad the food's not in there. And here's the accessories. It's already showing you pictures of what they look like. You got your basket and your roasting rack. And here we go. Our magic envelope. Seem to always and the have winner this. is... Have these wonderful envelopes. Let's make sure we get everything out. Okay, empty. Okay, let's see. The first paper says uh, uh, "smoke free for a virtual, virtually smoke free experience." It's uh, got recommendations on oils and stuff to use. I didn't sneeze though. Okay, it says for a virtually smoke free experience. So you may have a little bit of smoke. Um, it does recommend not to use olive oil, butter, or margarine. I guess they burn faster and will smoke. The recommendations are canola, refined coconut, avocado, vegetable, and grapeseed oil. Um, we'll see more of this as we go. It says to keep the splatter shield clean uh, to help with the smoke. And it has how to batch cook. So it's got some shortcuts, some quick shortcuts. Every time I hear canola, I think of Godfather 2. Leave the gun, take the canola. Yeah, cannoli. It's not the canola. Okay, little book. It's got some recipes in here to follow. Street corner, you got your chart. That'll come in handy. Okay. All right, like any of the other things, Comes with your warning, do not use this near or on top of a appliance like Did you say stove. street corn? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, I heard street corn, they're pretty husky after being uh, out on yes. the street. Okay. Let me just ignore the background. But he comes with the package. Um yeah, she said package. Okay. This is the one we want. Oh, here's our another little cheat sheet it looks like. Quick start guide. It shows you how to put the thermometer in correctly so that you get a proper reading on it. I always like the little cheat sheets. Those are easier to keep handy. And they go step by step. This looks pretty, like it'll be pretty informative. It even shows you pictures so that you can pick the right setting you want. Uh, more flavors, less smoke. Tells you again, these are best for this temp, this temp, this temp. Pretty good. So it seems to have a lot of helpful notes. And why this guide looks really big? It's in 14 different it languages. It is in a lot of different languages. Um, I was just noticing here, it's already in different languages right on the cover. So let's see how big it really is before we get started. Right there. So depending on your language that you choose, it's really only about this thick. No, it's pretty thin because it just changed. That's the warranty. I didn't add the warranty to it. Yeah. 
now it's changing languages. So there's instructions. It's pretty, probably pretty basic like all the others. You got your parts list, your warnings. Don't use this in the bathtub. It has your, your warnings, kind of which are pretty basic. Like I said, don't use it in the bathtub. Don't use it on top of the stove. I'm just glancing I at I always some of these. wanted to grill something in the bathtub. Yeah, you know, I guess snacking in the tub is out. Um, it does say here, don't clean with metal scouring pads. Pieces can break off the pad and touch electrical parts, creating a risk of electrical shock. Um, it also says, don't put the main part in the dishwasher. No, we're in Arizona. It's you electrical. Just take no. it out during a haboob and let the yeah, sand let the blow sand it. Blast it. We don't have haboobs here. Before, the, Sounds like see. a personal problem. Yeah, and just, you know, just your basic stuff. We have our list, our grill grate, our crisping basket, our cooking pot, our movable splatter sheen, uh, shield, the hood, main unit. Wow. Uh, control panel, onboard thermometer, you know, it's all pretty basic, that part there. But now the fun start, it goes through what your buttons all do, the grill, the air crisp, the bake, dehydrate, broil. So it has a couple things that some of the others won't do. Um, there are, seems to be a lot of modes on this. Manual button, preset button, start, standby, preheat. So what I'm going to do first before we go any farther and reading anymore because this is setting up the thermometer and everything I'm making it out of the box. Let's we'll see what this thing looks like. Alright, so oh look a little brush probably for cleaning the grill part I'm sure okay, looks like got this part I don't have the pictures handy, so we'll just take each part out and then we'll go through and find out what their names are. Looks like be the grill. That seems to be attached, so we're just gonna move that and take this put off shift. Yep. Oh, there it is. Oh by the way, this is extremely heavy. <laughs> Um, it came in a brown box, and I had to lift it out. It's quite heavy to get out, so be careful. Ooh, look at that. Why is it shiny? You know, if I were filming this, this would be a boy meets grill story. Uh-huh. Guess that. And like I said, it's heavy. Big one. It's not lightweight. So, this is the hood, as it said, the main unit. Now comes the fun part. There's got to be a button or something because I'm holding it and it's not opening. Yeah, oh, I mean, no, it's got good. tape on it. Yes, it has tape everywhere. Okay, well, okay. we can't cook with tape Come on down it. here. Oh, oh, I found the thermometer thing. I saw a picture of this. Now it opens up nicely. Okay, more cardboard. Ah, this is the basket, the air fry basket. That's a big basket. A deep one. I'm looking forward to cooking fries and stuff with that. Let's do it a little. We're going to have to do this. This versus the other air fryer as well. I was disappointed with the emerald. Air Ooh, fry on that. Not, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. This is this your is lots. bottom pan. And there it is. I'm going to go with, I'm not sure if you can see it. This is your splatter shield up here. Kind of like what yeah. you have over your stove. Keep hmm. it. Keep it thing. I did see I some instructions on how to make sure it's in and everything. Okay. And, oh, okay, yeah. Pretty simple, basically. It looks like 
it's curved here. It's curved here. Well, this looks like it's going to be our grill again. Curved. It's going to go up here for cooking. That's pretty good. This is the hood. Tell you how to place the thermostat. I'm not sure how. I don't know that this even opens. I don't know. Maybe would it think it would. does it by itself when it's cooking because there doesn't seem to be any buttons or releases and I didn't see any instructions. Well, unless it's farther on in there, I have to look. But as everything else and as usual, it gives you this long, extensive it's about what three feet? One and a half foot. <laughs> That's uh, about three feet. So you kind of limited as to where you can put it on on the counter. Shot of the rear. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. We haven't used anything, and here's our thermometer. It says there's a yeah, there's the jack on the side. This is just where it's stored, I presume. Is that and the then, thermometer itself? Yeah, this is the thermometer here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I see. And then this part here plugs into here. And I assume the other part plugs into your meat. And then it goes into the meat. Okay. And everything is connected. And this panel here that's not lit up on the front, the bar across the front, is your panel. This is where when we plug it in, we'll see everything light up. Okay. But... We have to take a pause here because I have to wash the stuff yep. before we can use it. And set it up in the kitchen. It was just too yes. big to open on the counter. <laughs> so we're going to move so. it to the... It's all set up in our kitchen. We gathered a couple things. We had our chicken, which is what we're going to do. Some chicken. Um, we got some salt, pepper, garlic, and some oil. It is vegetable oil because one of the recommendations is vegetable oil. So we're going to start. We will be using a barbecue sauce. I had flipped through some recipes and it says when when using a barbecue sauce that you're going to want to flip it so not to use the thermometer. So when we do this, we're going to do other videos and we'll do like steaks and stuff and we'll demonstrate the thermometer. This one, we're not going to use the thermometer. So unfortunately, I have very few plugs in my kitchen, which is why we're way over here by the sink, because that's where the plug is. The other ones are down low and the cord is not very long and it says don't use an extension cord. Okay, so if we're following through with the book, it starts with the, spl uh, the splatter shield, which when we opened it was already in the machine, so I'm not gonna go ahead and pull it apart. It does have step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it in, take, you want to take it out when you're done and clean it, and then it has step-by-step -step instructions on how to make sure it's in there properly. But make sure it's completely dry before you put it back. And there is the splatter screen. If you can see it, it's up here. It just looks like the same thing you have over your stove. Okay? Kind of like a mini hood. Yeah, and then, so that's all this here. And then the next page, two pages, go over using the thermometer. How to put it in, how to set it, and everything like that. But like I said, since we're not going to use the thermometer right now, we're going to skip ahead to our first cooking function, which is to grill. And we're going to make sure this all comes out right, so I have to pick it up to read it. Okay, we have done that correctly. It says right here to put the pan in first. You always have, there's even a warning down inside here that says make sure you have the pan. has a little notch like we saw before matches up with the front, put it in. It says to put the grill in with the handles up. It has a little notch in the front too. There's a little notch in your pan. So we have done that. Place that all in there correctly. Okay. Then it says to press the grill button. Okay, I'm going to assume that I'm going to have to push this power button first. Okay, and now I'm going to push the grill button which is right here, it says air crisp, roast, grill, bake, broil, dehydrate. We're gonna go with grill, okay? Press the grill button. The default temperature setting will display, which looks like it's high. Um, adjust. 
Um, let me see here. Oh, here. I saw this little thing. According to this, for chicken, we're going to want it on high. Well, that makes sense. But in the recipe, it says because of the barbecue sauce, it might, it, right here, it says here, when using barbecue, use the low. So we want to set this to low. Okay. Uh, I guess it makes smoke. It's for your smoke and stuff. Because I did see that here before I turned the page from the thermometer. That's back on the thermometer page. Okay, so we have that set. And then it says to set your time up to 30 minutes or use the thermometer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set it for 30. Oh, it goes up one by one. Oh, if you hold it, it goes up faster. Okay, so it's on 30 now. Okay. Uh, use the center on the right foot this time, which we did. Okay. Press the start and stop to begin preheating. The progress bar will begin illuminating. It will take approximately 10 minutes for the unit to preheat. Okay, so press the start and stop. Oh, okay. Over here, little tiny thing says start and stop. Right there. So we're going to go ahead and push that because shut, shut the lid. lid. Oh, look, it even tells you what to do. Shut your lid. <laughs> okay. okay, it is now preheating. Oh, it's making noise. It is making noise. A very low hum. It's not like, you know, we'll see how loud it gets. Uh... I'm going to be out with a hot grill tonight. Oh, according to this, it'll tell us when it's ready to add the food. It'll say right here, according to this, add food. So we're going to go ahead and get our chicken. And yeah, I looked on at that one, of the <clears throat> excuse me, one of the recipes, and it said to brush it with some oil. salt and pepper on them I'm not putting the barbecue sauce on just yet according and I like a little bit of garlic so you're gonna put a little garlic on ours I like a lot of garlic so just a couple basic seasonings to get it started and then we're going to start cooking it before we put the sauce on it. Do both sides or just one? Oh, I could do the other sides too. salt and pepper it to taste. I'm not tasting it now. About a teaspoon of salt. Yeah, I don't understand when they say salt and pepper to taste. How do you know <laughs> what the taste is unless you lick the raw chicken? Yeah, let's not do that. Well, that's just right. <laughs> no, eat a little more salt. I mean, if you like I use a lot of salt in cooking, only because we shouldn't have it. I use a lot of garlic. That's good for your blood pressure. No, she doesn't like to assault things. Oh. Alright, so it looks like we have a few minutes. We're going to take a pause here while we wait for this to heat up and we'll be back. I said about 10 minutes. We probably got about 8 more left before. Okay, we have to make one adjustment. We set it to meet <clears throat> medium. I'll show you here in the book, it says that there is a setting for marinated or sauced meat for medium. And then I had found this recipe I was looking for and it said medium. It now says to add our food, which we're going to go ahead and do. And then we're going to cook it for a few minutes. So I'm going to open the lid. Apparently it shuts off when you open it. It will give you a blast just like opening an oven. 
And we're gonna put one. It looks like. Ooh, hope we can fit them. Ouch. I didn't touch it. Three. Three will fit. Three chicken leg quarters will fit on here. So. Okay, and then according to the recipe, it says to add the food, close the lid. It's on medium. You can see here it says 29. It says let it cook for 10 minutes. So when it gets to 20, we're going to open it, flip it over, and then cook it for five minutes. According to this, it's going to cook this fast. We will see. But now in the while it's doing that for 10 minutes, we can see here where it shows here the marinated meat and stuff to cook it on medium. Okay. I don't know if that's focusing, where? but okay, yeah. And then I found, I was flipping through while I was waiting for it to preheat through here, and I found this recipe. This one is for honey mustard and barbecue glazed chicken breasts, but it's this pretty much the same and it tells you to set it for medium okay and it takes about 30 minutes and this is where we're getting the idea to flipping it and it says to cook it for the 10 minutes flip it cook it for five minutes and then put your sauce on it and cook it for five minutes and then do the other side okay and if necessary baste some more but we will see. Right now we're gonna wait for it to hit 20, and we're gonna open the lid, and we're gonna flip it over. Open it. it should turn the timer off. We're gonna turn it over. You missed it by a couple seconds, but wow, that's look how really good. That's what, 10 minutes? Yeah, that's Holy 10 minutes. Cow. And cook it for how long on this side? It says turn it over. Five more minutes. And then you put the barbecue sauce on? Then you put the barbecue sauce. It's going now. It makes a lot of noise, but it, you can smell it. It smells heavenly. I mean, oh, it smells you good. You can smell everything yeah. cooking. We started cooking the rest of the food to go with it. And that's it. As soon as this is done, on this five minutes, so what will we be at? 15? When it hits 15, we'll open it up again. We're going to go ahead and uh, put some barbecue on it, go five minutes, and then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to put barbecue on the other side and let it go with whatever's left on the timer. And we're going to open it, and we're going to put some sauce on it. Oh, look, it even said flip. Oh, does it still say it? No, no. Cool. No, it doesn't say it. I just noticed it. So, so that's I'm all pre-programmed. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of pre-programmed on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. We are using um, just a uh, sugar-free, uh, or no sugar oh, no added, sugar added um, barbecue sauce. You can use whichever one you want or make your own. But my husband can't have the sugar, so we're going to go ahead and use this. And here we're going to close it and we're going to cook it for five minutes. She never gives me any sugar. Yeah, so see, that, it's, I don't know if it'll say to flip it. It just happened to say flip it then. I just noticed it. Flip it good. Mm -hmm. Two, one. Nope, one. it didn't say flip it that time. It didn't say that we'll time. see. Oh, look wow. at that. Nice. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna turn them over. Oh man, that looks awesome. a little bit when you open it up and you're doing this yeah, so it's not that bad but I will say I haven't seen any smoke that's amazing where's okay. the smoke going now we're gonna close this and 
go for another five minutes. And we're going to just, no, we're going to let it go. Or for ten, until it's done. Until it's done. So until it hits 30 minutes, we're going to let it go. 10 minutes left, so, or 9.45. So we'll see what it says. And then it has a rest time at the end that it says will pop up and say rest, but we have to get the meat off of there so it can rest. So. And, and oh, that just ended. Hmm. Oh boy, Ooh, yeah, Jesus. that is Cajun style. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna let it, it sit. Be, it's actually. supposed to have a thing on there that says rest, that starts the rest. I think maybe you need to take it off. And it did not. Yeah, it says to remove it from the thing and let it rest for. Maybe you're supposed two to remove the minutes. tray. Maybe the tray triggers it. I don't think so. It's to remove the food from the thing. All right. Well. That looks good. It's the only way I can let it rest, so I need a bigger plate. All right. How long does it say? Five minutes? Or? No, just a couple minutes. Um, so, okay. I'll set my timer. Okay, rest three to five minutes. I did see a light up that this should say resting. Yeah, I wonder what made. I don't know why it did not. I'll have to look through the book and find out why it didn't come up with our, our rest. Yeah. Because it says here, add food, food. Oh no, it says end. Weird. Because it did say on, it says on that label on the thing that it'll do that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just keep trying. If it comes up, it comes up. Otherwise, just when you're done, always rest your food for about, about five Maybe minutes. Maybe it's a setting. And uh, then we we're gonna attempt to see, to make sure that it reached the proper internal temperature, which should be 165. Okay, our timer went off, so it has rested, and now I'm gonna take my thermometer and temp the chicken. Oh, wow, that went in like a breeze. Oh, 170. Yeah, I think we're done. 180. Yeah. Oh, we're done. 180. Oh, that's just falling in. Yeah, that looks good. I gotta yeah. eat that. <laughs> so, in half an hour, and minimal mess. I mean, I made more mess taking it out of the oven yeah, than when it was that's cooking. That's pretty awesome. So you can't clean it until it's 100% cold. So we're just going to let it sit while we go ahead and eat. And we'll and see you at the table. We'll see you there. All right. We had, I had made some potatoes. We're having some salad with this. And you can see it's still steaming, oh, yeah. steaming hot. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to rip this apart to Lots see of the juice inside. on the plate there, too. Yeah. Oh, this looks good. Just take a big bite out of it. No, oh, look at the heat coming out of this thing. It has bestest mouth. Let me get a close up of that. Look at that. Wow, that's nice, awesome. Nice, juicy. That's, I'm going to have to say it's better than grilling. <laughs> it's not dried out. Yeah. It's nice and juicy. Look at that. It's cooked. I mean, the temperature gauge just shot right up when we put it in. Look at that. It's piping hot. Barbecue chicken. Not bad. Okay. Not it's bad. It, it's not excellent. It's, good. it's not oh, bad. It it's... I mean, for cooking it in the kitchen, yeah. On a grill, yeah, this is good. I mean, no pink. Yeah. It's perfect. All the juice. There's lots of juice. Delicious. Alrighty, and I'll do my thing. Is saying if I can, if I can cook with this, so can you. Yay. <laughs> it's a piece of cake. And cut. Love you, darling. <laughs>